Hello everyone, welcome again in Engman YouTube channel. So in this video, we'll continue our learning on Prosper software. And today's topic is about simulation or modeling for a day watering well for a CBM reservoir. All right, CBM is coal bed methane. So usually to produce gas from CBM, we perform the, the watering, okay, using for example, ESP, electrical submersible pump. So now we will model a well, a dewatering well with ESP to dewater the CBM reservoir. Okay, and of course we will perform the modeling and simulation using Prosper software. Okay, so you can follow me. We start with this step. Okay, fluid description, fluid oil and water. Okay, method black oil, separator, single stage separator. Emulsion, no. PVT warnings, disable warning. Water viscosity, use default correlation. Viscosity model, Newtonian fluid. And therefore, the well, flow type, tubing flow. Well type, this one, we open the drop down menu. CBM producer. Okay, so in Prosper, we will deal differently between producer in a conventional reservoir and for CBM, okay? And for the artificial leaf, open the drop-down menu. You can see if we select CBM producer, then automatically the Prosper will give us for the artificial leaf method only ESP or PCP, electrical submersible pump or progressive cavity pump. Okay, so in this case, we will use ESP, electrical submersible pump, and for the type, model produced oil only okay but we can also have model produce oil and gas in annulus in this case we select this one you can also type in the user information and also the comments here and then for the calculation type predict i prefer on land on shore for the cbm production for this modeling of course and for the model rough approximation, range full system, brine properties default, type case hole, nose and control, inflow type single branch. Okay, we click done. And we will wait. Okay, so the Prosper is now ready to input this one, the PVT section. Okay, so you can see the PVT input data section is much simpler for CBM. All right, and you can see there is no matching tab here. Okay, and now you can follow my data. Guess gravity, 0 0.6. Okay, and then for the water salinity, 100,000 ppm. Gas liquid ratio, 0. Okay, mole percent of H2S, CO2, and nitrogen, 0. Okay, click done. Now we go to the next step for the IPR. Okay, so for the reservoir model, we go to this one, CBM producer, right? CBM producer. And now you can see now we have gas liquid ratio. Actually, we will use 10 here. So the actual gas liquid ratio is 10, okay? Reservoir pressure 800, reservoir temperature 100. So the information of gas liquid ratio that will be used is this one, 10 SEF per STB. Reservoir model, productivity index two, stock tank barrel per day per PSI. And now in this case, we need to input the relative permeability, okay? Residual water saturation 0.2, Residual gas saturation, for example, zero. Water endpoint relative permeability, 0 0.8. Gas endpoint relative permeability, 0 0.8. Corey exponent for water, 1.5. For the gas, it is two. The relative permeability water reduces when SG higher than zero, not SG higher than the residual gas saturation. We select. Norel berm. Okay. 
And then from here, we can click calculate. You can see the absolute open flow, the maximum flow rate is 1,222.49 stock chamber per day. And you can plot the result. I want to show only the rate and pressure rate on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and pressure on the vertical axis, the y-axis. Click done. OK, so now you can see we have a straight line IPR. OK, because the dominant flow, the dominant fluid will be water. OK, and the gas is very small, only 10 SEF per STB. All right, click done, click done. Okay, so this is the IPR, and now we need to input the information here for the equipment data section. I will edit the data for deviation survey, downhill equipment, geothermal gradient, and average heat capacities. Click done, I click edit, I mean, for deviation survey, zero zero it is a vertical well quite short 2600 create the plot you see vertical well finish click done now the well the downhole equipment christmas tree at zero zero depth then we will have tubing down to 2500 with inside diameter of 2.875 to be inside roughness of 0 0.0006 inches with outside diameter of the tubing 3.25 the same roughness and the casing inside diameter 6.1 the same roughness we assume it rate multiplier one and lastly we have casing down to the bottom of the well at 2600. Casing inside diameter 6.1, the same roughness, the same rate multiplier. Click done. Okay, and then we need to input the geothermal gradient. The overall heat transfer coefficient is eight. You can follow me, 60 at zero depth and at the reservoir depth. The temperature is 100 feet. Click done. Yeah, this is the default numbers for average heat capacities for oil, gas, and water. No need to edit it. Click done. Check the summary. Draw down hole. Okay, so this is the schematic of our well. But later on, we will install ESP at this well. Click done. 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 We need to wait. Okay, so this is the schematic of our well without ESP, but now we will install ESP to our well. Usually we perform design and we do the design by inputting the data here. The calculation will be done here, but let's assume I skip that. Okay, let's assume that I already know the design, the proper design of my ESP to this well. So, I can skip this one, cancel. If you're interested in ESP design, you can check my video on my other videos in this channel, or maybe later on in the future, we can create more videos about ESP. Okay, but in this video, I will just concentrate on the modeling of the well, and I just straight on input the ESP, install the ESP to my well, okay? And here we open this section. Okay. You can follow me. Pump measure depth at the bottom of my tubing, 2,500 feet. Operating frequency at 60 hertz. Maximum pump OD 6 inches, still smaller than the casing ID. Length of the cable. 2,750 feet, gas separator method, enter separator efficiency, 
and the efficiency, let's assume 90%. Liquid level will be entered and the liquid level, the operating liquid level will be 2000 feet. Okay, so you can see for ESP operation, we don't use packer. There will be liquid level, dynamic liquid level or operating fluid level, operating liquid level inside the annulus and we keep it at 2000 feet. Okay, and then the stages, the number of the stages, 58. Okay, and then for the voltage at surface, 465, pump wear factor zero, gas derating model none, allowed tapered ESP, no. And then for the current pump, I will open the drop down menu and I will find my pump, centrelift, and then R7, centrelift R7, where are you? This one, four inches, and the range of the rate is 500 to 900 barrel per day. Okay, I will select that and you can get the pump curve here. All right, so far so good. You can check the pump curve. We have several operating frequencies, 40 Hertz to 70 Hertz. And then we have minimum operating range, maximum operating range, and the best efficiency line. Okay, all right. I will maximize the window. Let's check it again, okay. So you can see this is the minimum operating range, maximum operating range, best efficiency line. This one is the line for 40 Hertz, 50 Hertz, and then 60 Hertz and 70 Hertz, okay, for each head. All right. And then for the motor, open the drop down menu. I will find century leaf 562. All right. 38 horsepower. Where are you? 38 horsepower. Okay, quite difficult to find. 435 voltage. Okay. We'll check it. Reda motor, ODI motor, Novamed. Okay, comprehensive list. Where are you? Five six two fifty three ampere. Okay, I think we can select this one. Okay, let's choose this one. And this is the motor, the, the motor curve, the nameplate, the amperes, efficiency, power factor and the line for the percentage name plate amps, motor efficiency, the green line. Okay. And then for the power factor, the blue line and motor speed, 40 Hertz through 70 Hertz, 40, 50, 60 and 70. Okay, you can do this on your Prosper and learn it by yourself. Okay. All right. And lastly, for the cable, open the drop down menu. One copper, 0 0.26, 23 amps max. Okay. So this is my pump configuration, the pump depth, the operating frequency, max OD, 
and then the efficiency for the gas separation, the liquid level, the stages, the voltage, and others. Okay. So far, so good. We can click done. And the picture will change to ESP well. Okay. So this is the schematic of our well, our onshore or online well with ESP. And now we are ready to perform calculation. And in this video, I will concentrate on generating VLP, vertical lift performance. So we do that by using calculation VLP or tubing curves. All right. Okay, so for the bottom hole pressure, I will set it at 400 PSIG. And the GLR, for example, 5 or 10 SCF per STB. And for the vertical lift correlation, I will use Petroleum Experts 2 rate method. I will use user selected, okay. Or we can also select this one, automatic geometric. And for the calculated or calculate to be curve standard, you can also use this one, lift curves for simulators. Let's say we will generate VLP for MBAL or for other reservoir simulator. We can select this one, lift curves for simulation or simulators. And lastly, click no. And now we create cases. Okay. I will set the operating frequency to be 60. We will only create actually just one case. And I will set the top node pressure to be all right, 500. With the CBM GLR, I will set it at 10. And for the liquid level, I will set it at 2000. Okay, click done. All right, and then we can click this one, calculate, show calculating data. All right, very fast. Okay, so this is the VLP table results. You can get the water rate, gas rate, VLP pressure, wellhead pressure, wellhead temperature, first node temperature, the friction pressure, okay friction pressure drop, gravity pressure drop, pump intake pressure, PIP, pump discharge pressure, pump intake rate, average rate through the pump, pump discharge rate, and others. Comprehensive table, okay? Of course, you can click like this one and then copy and paste the data on your spreadsheet. Okay, you can click plot plot all cases we only have one case i will plot the water rate against the vlp pressure okay click done all right so this is our vlp interesting right this is our vlp okay you can also plot other parameters like for example friction gravity contribution, right? Pump intake pressure, pump discharge pressure, pump intake rate and others. Okay. Annulus rate, no. What about pump efficiency? Oh, you can see, right? So at this range, around approximately 600 to approximately 800, the pump will operate at maximum efficiency. And below that range or higher than that range, the efficiency drops. Power requirement. Removal. Head generated. 
Alright. Separator efficiency, 90%. It's constant. Intake temperature, outlet temperature, and others. Okay. Alright, so I think that's all. I think we can call it a day. But what about calculation VLP? I mean, nodal analysis. Top node pressure, let's say 500. CBM GLR, 10. Vertical lift correlation, I will choose petroleum experts. Rate method, automatic geometric. And let's calculate. Okay, so pressure and water rate. It's actually interesting, right? Actually interesting. What about decreasing the top node pressure to 400? Okay, now we can achieve this rate. All right, so I think we can call it a day. That's all in this video. We have learned about a dewatering well. We model a dewatering well, which uses electrical submersible pump to dewater the water, of course, from the CBM reservoir and, of course, to produce the gas. Okay, so that's all. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope this video is useful. Thank you so much for watching and see you again in the next Prosper videos. Thank you.